let me die. Let me die. should have known he was as good as dead when they wheeled him in. You did everything possible, everything you could, Dr. Cooley. Everything. Everything except save my patient. Everything in the books. Now, Dad, do I have permission to take over and try things my way? The operating room is no place to experiment. He's dead. I can't do any harm. Very well. The corpse is yours. Do what you want to do. All right. Make an opening into the chest cavity. Apply 100 milliamps of current directly to the heart, then massage by hand. I'll handle the brain area. By yourself? By myself. Massaging the heart. I am, I am. These electric shocks should stimulate the motor area enough to innovate the heart again. Then he won't need any external stimuli. Keep away from the motor area. You'll paralyze him for good. Which would you rather be, paralyzed or dead? Keep massaging the heart. You've already lost your patient, Doctor. I'm going to save mine. His pulse is coming back stronger than ever. It's unbelievable. Nothing is unbelievable if you have the nerve to experiment. I've been working on something like this for weeks. In your laboratory? I knew this would work if only I had the opportunity. You don't conduct experiments on people. You should be sure of the results first. I am now. Stop massaging the heart. Let's see if it can take over by itself. Close up the chest. I'm allowed to finish with the cerebral area. How's his pulse? Strong and steady.
Uh, you did perform a miracle. I may not approve of your methods, but I am proud of your results. Extraordinary operation, son. But it still is too risky, too uncontrolled. Saved his life. And the after effects? What about them? You've lost the urge to experiment, to explore. You don't explore on people. Before you put a scalpel to one, an operation like this needs testing under every condition. Over and over again. Rabbits, mice, monkeys, not people. That man who should be dead now won't think so. There's more to surgery than just being a carpenter to patch up walls or a plumber to drain pipes. Our bodies are capable of adjusting in ways we've hardly dreamt of. If we can only find the key, I'm so close now, so very close. The key to what? Complete transplantations. To be able to transplant limbs and organs. To be able to replace diseased and damaged parts of the body as easily as we replace eye corneas now. So that the new parts will join together as though they were born there. It can't be done. It can be done. My new special compound I've created, I'll do it. I know I can do it. Sure, sure, that's what you say. That's what I know. I know I'm close. Oh, darling, I'm so proud of you, I could kiss you. Promises, huh? Always promises. <laughs> Careful, your father's liable to report us. <laughs> and stop the floor show. When you two are married, it won't be fun to watch anymore. Well, I can promise you one thing. Your grandchildren won't be test tube babies. You better hurry if you want to catch that plane to Denver, Dad. You know that medical convention can't start without you. Uh, Jan, you'd uh, better check about my reservations. Oh, yes, I'll call the airport. I'll be right back. Bill, the line between scientific genius and obsessive fanaticism is a thin one. Now, I want you on the right side of it. If I don't experiment, how can I hope to perform operations like the one you almost messed up? But I can't cover up for you anymore. The superintendent had it out with me. He thinks it's you who's been stealing those limbs from the amputee operations. So what if it is? I've got to have limbs for my transplant experiments. Well, you said test an experiment. Test an experiment. Yes, but limbs and organs taken from people. I've got to have them to work with. Sure, I've made a few mistakes. But I've learned from them. I've learned. Your reservations are all set. 3.30 takeoff. Well, what have you two planned for the weekend? Oh, nothing much. Just a quiet weekend. Are you sure you're not going up to the country house? You're always sneaking off up there. The place gives me the creeps. I, I should have sold it when your mother died. You can't sell that place. Well, I mean, it's nice to get away from the city. I can work without anyone snooping around. You spend too much time up there. All right, I'll, uh, I'll see you both in a few days. Got to clean up and get out of here. Fine operation or not, Bill. You're walking on thin ice. But don't go too far. Oh, every time you touch me, I go out of my mind. I want to kiss you. Bill, I want to get married. I can't stand not having you. You've been wonderful. I'd rather be a bride. In a few more weeks. And nothing will keep us apart. We'll be together.
Dr. Cordner. I'm so glad you're here. I was afraid you'd gotten away. There was a very important phone message that came to you. It sounded quite urgent. I've been looking everywhere. It was from a man called Kurt. He called from the country place, and he said something terrible had happened. He wanted you to come right out. Thank you. Well, you've always wanted to know what's kept me away from you so many weekends. Have you got the keys to your car? Why haven't you ever taken me up here before? Because the things I'm working on don't need an audience. That telephone call. What about it? All right, all right. Hold off the questions. Why the mystery, Bill? What's it all about? We'll be there soon enough. You'll see. I've got to hurry. <laughs>
Wait, for God's sake, open the door. I'm coming. Mac, what's happened to you? It's been a terrible accident. I've got to save her. I've got to save her. What is it? What have you got there? Kirk, please. Sterilize the tubes and instruments quickly. What are you going to do? Aren't you going to have a look in the closet first? No, I can't now. This is more important. But you don't understand. For God's sake, Kirk, this is urgent. Do as I tell you before it's too late. I can't waste precious time arguing with you. are deceiving me. What you see is real. What's done is done, and what I've done is right. It's the work of science. I remember fire. Burning. success with transplants. Now I can do it for her. Transplant her to what? I brought her back. She'll live and I'll get her another body. I can make her complete again. Only a madman can believe that she could ever be like before. Don't argue with me. I love her too much to let her stay like this. I'll restore her as before. You'll see. Can't you realize? Can't you see? There's a pattern to all that lives. An order, an arrangement. She had a heart and a brain and a spirit was in both, not in one or the other. No. I'll give her a brain and a heart. Yes, and what of her soul? You say you love her and you can remember her love for you. Then how can you make of her an experiment of horror? All the skill and science I possess was meant for this. Life has a pattern. The whole pattern of my life is shaping itself to save her now. Then you intend to go through with it? Yes. Sleep, my darling. Rest and grow stronger.
long do you think we can keep her alive under these conditions? 48. 50 hours at the most. Yes. And you really believe you can work a transplant on her? Successfully? Yes. Like my arm. Withered and deformed. Yours was an early experiment that failed. With her, I'm using my new adreno serum. Must work. I, I've got to go now. If the police or anyone call, tell them you don't know anything about it. I don't think anyone will trace us here because her body was burned in the wreckage. Yes, yes, of course, of course. Look, Bill, before you go, do have a look in that closet. It's the reason why I called you up here. Keep it locked. Last night it got so violent it almost broke out. Oh. No, not through that thickness. Keep it closed. I've got to think about her now. I've got to find her a body. How are you going to go about getting one? Bill, how will you do it? There are ways. There are ways.
inside the closet. What has he done to you? I know there's someone there. Knock once if you hear me. first. He should have let me die. I hate him for what he's done to me. If he only knew what it's like being like this. Do you know what it's like? Together we could have revenge. You want revenge? still untouched. And his keeping me alive has given me a power he didn't count on. A power that you can feel. Across this room and through that door. Can't you? both more than things. We're a power as hideous as our deformities. Together we'll wreak our revenge. I shall create power and you will enforce it. You the thing inside. Be the thing out here. that door. Horror. No 
no normal mind can imagine. Something even more terrible than you. No, my deformed friend. Like all quantities, horror has its ultimate. And I'm that. There is a horror beyond yours. And it's in there. Locked behind that door. The paths of experimentation twist and turn through mountains of miscalculation and often lose themselves in error and darkness. Behind that door is the sum total of Dr. Courtney's mistakes. He had no right to bring me back to this. Perhaps not. Who knows? But you should know that before he injected the serum into that, it was but a mass of grafted tissues, lifeless. Just lay there, weighted down with its transplants of broken limbs and amputated arms. But with this serum, it, it began to breathe. It's impossible. Would you have thought possible what he's already done? Take yourself. He's brought you back. You live. Only a few years ago, all transplants were impossible. That's what he's been doing up here where no one could see his work. Yes. Experimenting with transplants on that. And on me. Letting him tear away my flesh time after time. Test after test. My hopes shattering with each grafted arm he fastened to me. Watching it wither and warp. Instead of strengthening. You see, he's learned from his mistakes. And you stayed with him. Helping him in his grotesque work that he claims is for science. Was there a place for me on the outside with this? In the world where eyes would look upon me with pity and people would turn away from me in disgust? No. The alcoholic has his bottle. The dope addict his needle. I had my research. I used to be a surgeon. It was my life. And one night in the laboratory there, there was an accident. They had to amputate my arm. And he has used you to... I have no choice. He was my only hope. A surgeon needs both his arms, not just one. Well, you see, my transplanted grotesqueness stayed. So did I. I live only for the day he can work a successful transplant to my body. That is why I stay. Transplant my head onto another body. Yes. And he's insane with the belief he can do it. The tissues of my body would reject the tissues of another. Reject it as a foreign substance it is. The transplant would never take it, would never stay in place. My blood's antibodies would attack it as they attack any invading matter. Yes, but his new discovery, this new serum, may change all that. This serum injected into the bloodstream affects the lymphoid tissues here in the neck. The lymphoids that provide the antibodies for the blood that attack foreign transplanted matter. It was untested, untried, till we used it on you. So, that liquid in the blood that's being pumped through what's left of me is what makes me feel the... <laughs> he may produce results he didn't ask for. Results? You mean like this? Results more 
terrible than your arm of relative beauty. Results of power. Of magnitude. Power. What power? Can't you see that you're at the mercy of every element of the universe? How can you speak of power? I have a power. This liquid that he's pumped into me. My brain burns with it. That thing inside an iron touch. Want me to prove it? You can prove nothing. You're powerless. I'll show you how powerless I am. You. Behind that door. Let me know if you hear me. Whoever, whatever you are, I command you. You understand me. I'm only a head, and you're whatever you are. Together we're strong, more powerful than any of them. What are you running from? What's wrong with you? Uh. Oh, it's you. Something wrong, something beyond control in that room. There's nothing beyond my control. She's alive and I'll keep her alive until I find her a body. Uh, I can't talk anymore. I'm tired. I've got to go to sleep. And you, you didn't find her a body? Well, I've got to be careful. I can't afford to be identified as the last person seen with a girl before she disappears. Do you think you'll get one? There are many things left for tomorrow. about to call a cop the way you were looking me over. How have you been, Bill? Oh, just fine, Donna. I haven't seen you for quite a while. Too long. I'm still waiting for that call you once promised me. Well, you know how it is with interns. All work. All work and no play even makes for dull doctors. You're gonna lose that bedside manner of yours. <laughs> Say, how's that little side course in anatomy? Yours? Anytime. No, not mine. A body beautiful contest. You know, bathing suit models. Plenty of females on the hoof. Your eyes will have a field day. Interested? Well, why not? You're just what the doctor ordered. Come on, jump in. Uh, on second thought, I just remembered I've got to stop by my place and take care of a few things. It only take a minute. You don't mind, do you? I always follow the doctor's orders. Anything you prescribe, I'll take. That's what I like about you, Donna. Always so obliging. Hey, Donna, where are you going? What's the hurry? Hi, Jeannie. We're going to look for some bodies. You mean the contest? Yeah. Got any room for me? Oh, sure. Plenty. Bill, this is Jeannie Reynolds. Jeannie, this is Dr. Hi. Phil Cortner. Hello. Hop in, but first we've got to stop off at his place. Sure. As a matter of fact, I can wait. 
Now that there's two of you, we'll have to wait. Guess he thinks there's safety in numbers. Oh, well, this time there is. We promise not to hurt you. And I promise not to hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> Backstage are five of the girls who have reached the contest finals, and we are here to choose Miss Body Beautiful. Now, we've eliminated everyone except the five finalists, and they will be judged solely by your applause. So let's bring them on. First, Helen Appleton. Figure model. You remember that one in school years ago? The one who had the accident. Oh, yeah, yeah. Doris, uh... Doris Powell. Yeah, is she still around? Few people see her nowadays. She just stays in her studio posing for art classes and camera bugs. Figure model. Poses for art classes. The nicest body she's ever seen. Maybe this is the one she's got to be. I can keep Jan alive only for a few more hours. I've got to find her a body. He, he intends to kill somebody. Rob them of their body. Do you hear me? Yes, you hear me. You know how Bill's egotism drives him on and on. To infamy upon infamy. Good ever be born of evil. He claims his work is for science, for humanity. To be joined to flesh, not your own. What's human in this? Of how you must exist, locked behind that door. We've got to stop him.
Okay, boys, I've had it for two Come on, baby, one more. Just one more, please. Another five minutes, baby. Time's just about up anyway. Okay. Say, Doris, would you like to have a drink with me? Just you and me, away from everybody? Some place where nobody will butt in with. You and I can really be alone. No, thank you. How about posing for me? Private-like. I'll pay you real money. Real good money. The kind of money they don't throw at you every day. And for doing hardly nothing at all. I do my posing for classes only, Wednesdays and Saturdays, 8 to 10. Yeah, I know, but we can... Good night. See it all, mister. The show's over. Next time, bring a camera and buy a ticket. I'm not running a charity. You don't remember me, do you, Doris? Every guy on the make gives me that same tired line. I'm Bill Courtner. Bill Courtner. Long time ago, that fight. He almost tore that wise guy apart for making fun of me. After my accident. Look, uh, can't we go somewhere and talk? No, I don't date men. Because I pose like I do. Your mind works overtime. You get ideas. You're all alike. Oh, not all of us. I'm not on the make for you. Okay, so maybe you're better than most. Maybe not. I still hate all men. I hate them for what one did to me once. Have you forgotten? Well, have you? No, I haven't forgotten. Well, neither have I. I carry the memory around with me. But you can't hide yourself away here forever, posing bare in front of a bunch of neurotics. Listen, Galahad. I trusted a man once, all the way. What did it get me? He gets his head full of jealous lies, and I You've get... You've got to forget what How happened. can I forget? I carry the memory around with me. <laughs> Am I so appealing to you now? Still so interested. Doesn't it make you sick? You don't even turn away from me, like everyone else does. To me, you're not ugly. I see only beauty in you. You have a lovely body and a face that can be made beautiful again also. Yeah. I've heard that song before. I'm a doctor, I know. My father's one of the leading plastic surgeons. If anyone can help you, we can. I know I can. I've been to doctors. It's no use. The scar tissue's too deep. No one can help me. Oh, that was a few years ago. Today, nothing's hopeless. Uh, we can graft scar and skin tissue that... Well, we can even freeze areas of the skin and sand away damaged skin tissues. The way you say that, that look in your eyes, I almost want to believe you. I almost want to believe you. Well, then start believing, hmm?
it again. Got to see your hideousness. You've got to see mine. Wonder which of us is more awful. Nothing you can be is more terrible than what I am. A head without a body. A head that should be in its grave. I hate him. I hate him for what he's done to me. Can your horror match mine? Quiet. Someone's coming. Come to feed your friend. While you feed yourself with hate, it prefers food. Your thought, my sniveling fear becomes you more. Yeah. What makes you think I'm afraid of what's in there? Or of you? A mere head in search of a body. People fear what they don't understand and what they can't see. What are you talking about? You're nothing but a freak of life and a freak of death. Why should I be afraid of a few knocks on a door? But last night you ran. You were afraid of what you imagined lay behind that door. I? Imagined? It was I who helped graft together the bits and pieces that were stolen from the hospital. An amputated arm, a leg, a torso. It was I who helped piece them together like a monstrous jigsaw puzzle. And that same medicine that he's fed to me to activate my lymphoid tissues, has he fed it to that? No. No, on that he used an earlier formula. It wasn't as successful as the serum he's using on you, but it uh, was enough to allow the transplants to take. Your experiment is successful. Oh, then it'll be my turn. And what else has happened to it? What do you mean, what else? Well, it's... It's mutated some, of course. It's changed considerably. Why don't you open the door? Both see how it's changed. Listen, you. I warn you. You better stop pestering me, do you hear? I'm getting fed up with you and your insidious talk. He should have cut out your tongue while he was at it. Afraid? Afraid of whom? Of you? No. Not anymore. But of it. Nor of it. Keeps it locked in there so that it'll be safe, that's all. Safe? From me? <laughs> you beast. I hope he prolongs your existence into a lifetime of agony. Then we'll see who's laughing at whom. You miserable fool! Get him! father could help me. I couldn't pay him the kind of money it would take. Don't talk about money. He does a lot of work without any charge. Why should you want to do this for me? What's in it for you? I'm going to make your face beautiful again. Cut it off and give your body away. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, Bill. I have been knocked around so many times. I've lost count. It's tough living with this. I don't mean to sound ungrateful. Well, because you've been battered around, don't go sour. You shouldn't lose your trust in people. Not all of us. I believe you. I want to. Do you really think something can be done? Only my father knows. Look, we have a country place just out of town. He's visiting for the weekend. I could take you there now for a consultation. You mean tonight? Well, if you'd rather wait till he comes back, if oh, he no, comes no. back. Oh, no, no. I mean, he wouldn't be annoyed being bothered with me so late at night. Well, you let me do the worrying, hmm? I'll do anything that'll help me get rid of this face. <laughs> well, that's where I come in. Remember the last time I helped you? Where are you going? Who are you calling? My girlfriend. I want to tell her the news. Before you know what the verdict's going to be? You're right. I, I shouldn't talk until I know what's going to happen. My girlfriend, she's supposed to drop in later. I'll have to leave her a note or something. Well, just tell her you'll see you later. Otherwise, she'll ask a lot of nosy questions. We want to be sure first. Just throw something on, huh? I'll be with you in a minute. Just tell her you'll keep in touch. I'll leave it on the table. She'll see it. Had to go out with old friend Bill Courtner. We'll call you tomorrow. Doris. Here. I'll leave it on the lamp. She'll see it, won't she? That's the first place she'll look. I'll leave the lights on for her. Hmm. I have waited so long for this. So have I. You and your father live here? Only on weekends when we want to get away from the city. The place certainly is lonely. Well, the further from prying eyes, the better. I mean, it's nice and quiet here. We can get away from the noise and telephones. Oh, I guess it is. Well, sit down, sit down. I'll fix us a drink, huh? My father should be back soon. You mean he's not here now? Oh, come on now, Doris. Do I look like a maniac who goes around killing girls? Now you've got to learn to trust people. Oh, people like me, really. I'm sorry. I trust you. I trust you with my life. Well, I can't ask for any more than that. I'll be right back.
<laughs> I was beginning to think you'd forgotten about me. Forgotten you? Why, Doris, you've become very important to me. Very important. I put a little water in it so it wouldn't be too strong for you. Fine. I'm not a very heavy drinker. Neither am I. Well, um, here's to your future, whatever it may be. I'll drink to that. I drink. body. A beautiful one. Soon it will be yours. Bill, you can't. Yes, I can. I want you as a complete woman, not part of one. Is it a crime to want to keep you alive? Is it a crime for science to jump ahead by years? This kind of thing must be done. It's over, you'll see. I've got to hurry now. The drug will wear off soon and she'll be awake. When she does come to, it will be your head consciously awakening for her.
Let me go. 